All right guys, so a couple of years ago, we moved into this amazing property where we can actually have chickens now. And ever since then, I've been asking Honey to get a couple of chickens, you know, have a coop and live the farm life. And every time I ask, her answer is always the same. No. No. No! <laughs> I can't believe you woke me up to talk about chickens. <laughs> so, I figured since she's out of town for an entire week, I'm gonna build the ultimate chicken coop and not give her an opportunity to say no. And I guess it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. So we got a lot of work to do in a week and welcome to the Comar Project. All right, since this was a last minute decision to actually build this thing, I wasn't dead set on the location of it. So I decided I'm gonna build a treated platform that everything else will be built on top of, but I can actually get a forklift underneath it and lift it if I need to move it down a road. And this entire thing right now is being constructed upside down because I wanted some two by fours underneath the post to kind of distribute the weight. Um, but then that platform that I'm working on right now, that is what the coop is going to be constructed on top of. And it's just two by four construction that's glued and screwed together. And on the inside, I also ran an additional stretcher because that's where the wall is going to sit. And that's just gonna give me a little bit more support. Now I can flip that platform right side up and start adding in the joists that are gonna support everything else. I first secured them with a angled screw and that's just gonna hold it in place for me while I can actually put it in the joist hangers. The joist hanger is what's actually gonna support that joist. So if you're installing joist hangers, just make sure that you put a galvanized nail in every single one of those holes. All right, so we got our base frame all done up and it's solid, it's not going anywhere. The only thing is it's wobbly right because it's not sitting on a level ground right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out the location of where it's actually gonna sit and mark it out with some spray paint and then I can come back and put down some gravel just to level everything out there's no turning back now it'll be okay it'll be okay here we go still got it I'm only digging out the area where the platform frame is because it's still gonna sit above grade and to be honest with you, I just didn't buy enough gravel to do the entire area. And because I'm working on limited time here, I just couldn't go back to the store over and over and get more materials. So this is gonna have to work. Next, I can sit the platform on the gravel base and it was pretty close, but I still had a few adjustments here and there until I was happy with it. And then I added gravel all the way around it to lock it into place. And of course, no structure would be complete without the shimmy shimmy shake. And I know that everybody does it because it's a real thing and it's even in the DIY building rule book. Next, I ripped some OSB plywood to size and cut out the notches for the posts and secured it using inch and 5 8 screws. Then on the platform, I secured a full sheet of half inch plywood to the frame first and marked my cut line with a chalk line and cut it right there on the platform. All right, so the base of it is done. Now all we gotta do is build a coop. Let's do it. I cut both my top and bottom plate at the same time. This way I know that they're exactly the same size and I can move on to marking out my front wall. Typically when marking out a wall, you're gonna start on one end and work your way down marking every 16 on center. But since I wanted my windows to be centered, I started in the middle and worked my way out. This way I can use the space between my studs for the windows and not have to use a header to support my rafters later on. Using my framing gun, I secured the studs to the top and bottom plates, lifted my wall up and temporarily secured it to the base with a scrap 2x4. Once I was happy with the plumbness, I guess that's a word, I added a few screws to the bottom plate to hold it in place while I built the back wall. All right, on the back side of the coop, I want to be able to access it so that I can clean up all the doo-doo and just sweep it right out. So I decided I'm gonna put a 42 inch, 42 inch door back here that'll just swing open. And in order to do that, I need to put in a header and we can still do this with two by fours. 
This coupe is gonna have a lean-to roof, so I'm making the back wall 10 inches shorter than the front. And I probably should have constructed both walls beforehand because it was a little tricky nailing it together with the front wall already up. But this was the only flat surface around me and I just had to make it work. So a little creative space usage and we have a back wall ready for a header. And the purpose of a header is to allow you to build up above a open space, so like a window or a door. So it does need to be fairly strong. So to do that, you take a piece of half inch plywood and you sandwich it between two pieces of lumber using glue and nails from both sides. <laughs> Shh. Hello. Hi, honey. How's you doing? Working. Working? What are you working on? Um, building a box. Working on a box? Yeah. For what? Ah, I gotta send t shirts. I gotta build a box and send t shirts. Then. Yes. Hey, why can't I see your, your Instagram? It, I was trying to go and check out your stories and I can't see anything. I haven't posted any stories. But I can't even find you. Oh, I have no idea. I, I don't know. It's probably Instagram's probably broken. Yeah, there's probably something with the app, honey. Just refresh it or something, and then you'll be able to find me. Okay. No, babe, everything's perfect. How's your trip? Good. I gotta get back to work. Okay, I'll call you later. Yeah. All right. I love you. Bye. And I hope she doesn't think that I'm up to no good. That's her again. Honey, the box just fell. Can I call you right back? All right, love you. Bye. Okay. All right, well, we'll just set it down. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I guess I forgot to put those screws in. It's okay. I, it gives me an opportunity to put those cripples in. But now we can secure that back wall and move on to framing the side walls. The right side is going to have a full wall. But on the left side, I'm going to have an access door and a chicken door. And I didn't take into consideration the jack stud that holds the header up for that main door. So to gain every inch possible in this wall, I decided I'm going to cut a header slot in the return stud. This is one of those things that I typically wouldn't do on normal construction because you don't have to, right? But in this case, that door is already like 18 inches wide. So I wanted to make it as large as I possibly could without losing that space. So for this coop, it's going to work perfectly fine. Now I can move on to the roof rafters. And then instead of trying to do some math and figure out the pitch, I just place a small level plumb to the ground up against the rafter and make my mark. Then I can cut that angle on the front and back of each rafter and secure it using hurricane ties with the help of a palm nailer, which really makes this process much easier and I wish I had one of these before this build. I also painted the fascia, the rafters, and one side of a sheet of plywood that's going to show on the inside of the roof. When I built my shed, I didn't do that, and I always said that I would go back and paint it later on. But once everything was sheeted, it was more difficult to get into those roof rafter spaces, so I never went back and painted it. So this time, I'm going to paint it all while it's exposed, and that way, when I install the windows, all you'll see is black through there, and you won't see any of the unfinished wood. For the sheeting, I'm using 3 8 inch plywood on the walls and half inch plywood on the roof. And I don't worry about any of the openings right now, I just plywood right over them, except for one area where I can go inside and use my sawzall to cut all those openings. And this right here, guys, this is my favorite part, cutting out the base plate, because that means that pretty much your framing is done. You cut these out for all your openings and it's done. Battery. <laughs> Trace again. All right, so that's pretty much it for the framing, the major framing. We still have to build the nesting boxes, but now we can actually sheet that roof and make it watertight by putting on shingles. Alright, 
for roofing, the first thing that we need to do is install the drip edge on the back. But obviously we can't just leave it like this extended past the roof. So we gotta cut a return into it. Now we can actually bend it and that will fold right underneath it. After I had the back drip edge installed, I rolled out roof felt and secured it using Plascap nails. Once that was installed, I can put the drip edge on the rake of the roof as well, right over that felt. And again, I cut a return into it, but this time it's going on the peak side of the roof. And now I'm ready to start installing the shingles on my roof, but I first need to cut a starter strip. And that can be cut from a full size shingle using a utility knife. I place a full starter strip on the bottom end of the roof, making sure that it overlaps that drip edge on both sides by 3 8 of an inch. Then I can secure it using roofing nails and repeat the process until I get to the other end of that roof line. Once I'm done with the starter strip, I can place my first full shingle, making sure that my bottom edge is even with that starter strip. And once I have my first row completed and it's straight, it's fairly easy and a repetitive process at that point. Lay a shingle, nail it in, lay a shingle, nail it in until you get to the peak and then you can install the front ridge cap. From the top, I secured it using roofing nails, but on the front side, I'm going to be using screws with a rubber washer to give it a little bit more of an interesting look. With the roof all done, I can move on to making the two doors. And I wanted to keep it simple with two by four and plywood construction. To install them, I'm using something that I use all the time and that's inflatable shims. They're super useful for installing doors and windows and they make this process much easier than regular shims. Building nesting boxes so that my chicks can have somewhere to lay my omelets, I'm building the base like a regular wall and then I can secure it to the coop with glue and nails. Once I have the platform done, I can build the separations out of two by twos and sheet them with plywood for a little privacy for the ladies. All right, so that was the last piece and I'm calling it a night because I literally cannot see. I got the camera bumped up as high as it can go on ISO. We're pretty much done with the framing. There's a few little things that I need to do to make this thing functional for the chickens. But tomorrow night, Honey comes home and I don't want her to see this thing until it's completely done because, you know, I want to get that experience that, oh my God, it's so cool. You're not in big trouble experience. So. If I can get this thing pretty much all wrapped up tomorrow, she goes to work on Monday. So if I can keep her out of the backyard tomorrow night, I should be good. That'll give me almost a day and a half to work on this thing. And so yeah, I'm gonna go eat some frozen pizza, get some really good sleep and hit this thing early in the morning tomorrow. While I get some Z's, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this build, PowerSmart. PowerSmart specializes in design and manufacturing of tools and outdoor power equipment ranging from lawnmowers, generators, snowblowers, and much, much more. I've been cutting my lawn using only a tractor mower, and that just doesn't get into the smaller areas that a push mower can. I wanted something slender with plenty of power that can handle the tall grass, but more importantly, battery operated so that I don't have to worry about gas. And their 40 volt cordless mower is perfect for the job. It's 17 inch cutting deck allows me to get into those narrow areas and it's just going to be perfect for cutting the grass around the coop where my tractor can't get into. It has five different height cut settings to pick from, a grass collection bag for easy cleanup and their 40 volt battery system gives me 43 minutes of runtime on a single charge. But what I really like is the low noise that it produces. It allows me to cut the grass even into the late hours of the evening without my neighbors getting mad at me. And with my crazy schedule, that's huge. This mower is perfect for city and suburban yards or to use it as a complement for your tractor on a big property like mine. Thank you to PowerSmart for supporting what I do. Make sure you guys go check out all their power tools that I'm currently using in the description below. And now let's get back to the build. 
After sleeping on it, I decided this coop is going to need some vinyl flooring to prevent all the waste from sticking to the floor. And in order to install this peel and stick stuff, I need to seal the plywood first. I'm using Total Boat's wood sealer that is going to fill the grain, seal the wood fibers, and help to level the surface so that that tile has a good bonding area. I first sealed the bottom plate and then I rolled it out over the entire surface. I ended up putting two coats of it on and while it was drying I had some time to paint the coop my favorite color called iron ore. Even Thor came out to check it out because he loves it too but he had to move so that I can actually finish painting and get to installing the flooring. Like I said before, this is vinyl peel and stick flooring and it's super easy to install. I put this in before in our basement, my shop, and even in our laundry room where we've had water spills and it holds up great. So I figured this is gonna be a great addition to the coop. There's no additional glue needed. It's got its own sticky backing that will bond to the subfloor as long as it is prepared and sealed properly. So if you guys wanna check out a full video on how to install this, I'm gonna have it linked in the description below. Next, I can jump into the shop and make the three windows for the front of the coop. I'm using three quarter inch plywood and to attach it, I'm using glue and pocket holes. And there we go. We got our first window. I don't know, can you guys hear that? In the background. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, come here, buddy. So these are silky chickens. This is a white one, we got a black one, and a partridge. And, I mean, come on. Look how cute that thing is. And I know that as soon as Honey Bunny sees these things, she's gonna absolutely fall in love with them because she's an animal lover just like me. And just, you know, the thought of having another pet is a lot to handle, but come on, this cuteness will be good. I hope we'll be good, buddy. Oh, her name is Patricia. Patricia, you are going to have the coolest coop ever. Boy, did you luck out. All right, playtime is over and it's time to get back to work. And to fit the plexiglass in, I routed out a rabbit on my router table. Gave them a coat of black paint and cut the appropriate size panel on my table saw. Now this is not your typical acrylic plexiglass. This is called polycarbonate. It's a little bit more flexible and you can drill through it without it cracking. But the reason that I really like it is because of its really cool glare that it gets when the sun hits it. It almost looks like limo tint. With the windows in, I can move on to making the cedar accent wall. And I just didn't want this to be another accent wall. I wanted it to have a little bit depth, a little bit of texture to it. So I took half of the batch and planed it down by a quarter of an inch thinner than the rest of it. And then when I installed it, I just alternated the planks. So I would do a thicker one, a thinner one, a thicker one, thinner one. And I think it just gives it a little bit more depth. And I really do like the way it came out. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, with a few adjustments of the block plane to make sure that these windows open and close properly, that part of the project is done, and we can move on to making the lid for the nesting boxes. I first cut a rabbit in a piece of cedar that will act as the front and the side lips of that lid. I glued and screwed it to a piece of plywood that I cut to size, and now on a table saw, I can resaw some cedar to make thin veneers to go over that lid. Once I glued and pin nailed all of them to our top, we can secure it to the coop. And of course, we have to make it self-opening with some gas struts. Right on. All right guys, so the coop is coming along so well and I love how it's looking. There's still a few finishing touches that, you know, I gotta put on it, little, little small details for the chickies. And, uh, but I gotta take a break because Honey Bunny's coming back today, so I gotta go get her from the airport. And we're gonna reveal this thing to her. We'll see what she thinks and see if I have to live in it with the chickens or if I could still sleep, you know, in bed, so. You ready for your surprise? No. All right, you gotta put this on. Look at this, it's like 80 degrees outside. <laughs> Over your eyes. Oh. Can you see anything? No. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. 
All right, give me your hand. All right, let's go. What did you do? Is it a hot tub? Oh, it's not a hot tub. But that's actually not bad. It's not bad. You good? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be all right. There's a seat out here for you. Put your hand right there. You can scooch back on it. All right, now put your hands out. Okay, no, not like that. Like this. Like this. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm scared. All right. Oh Surprise. Oh my God. Oh my goodness! She looks a little surprised, or she looks a little surprised. Hi! Oh my lord! What? Okay. Fall asleep. Look at him. <laughs> Alright, babe. So, uh, can we keep him? Oh, yes. Yeah? You can't take him back now. I know, right? Sure. I, call, I call it a success, guys. I think, uh,. I think we're gonna be good. Chickens are in good hands, I think. Okay. And uh, let's finish this build up. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, it's time to make this coop really pop with Total Boats Gleam 2.0. This is a one part marine spar varnish that will protect my wood from UV rays and make it water resistant. I applied three coats of gloss to seal everything up and then come back the next day to finish it off with one coat of satin to get that smooth look. All right, so this is looking absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for this to dry. Um, but in the meantime, I can actually put in the coop door. The automatic coop door is from Run Chicken, and to install it, I just traced the opening, drilled holes on the corners, and used my PowerSmart mini circular saw to cut out the opening. Then I can screw the door onto the coop and download the app to start programming. The process is super easy. I just followed the instructions on the app, held my phone up to the door, and allowed it to sink. The door is pre-programmed to open at sunrise and close at sunset, but sunrise is a little bit early for me and I wanted to change that to 8 a.m. So I just followed the in-app instructions and was able to change it to whatever time I wanted. And now the chicks can come out a little bit later and not wake the neighbors. Next, I can cut out the openings for the nesting boxes and then concentrate a little bit more on the inside, making this coop more pleasant for the ladies by building some platforms for them and a couple of roosting bars so they can just hang out and have a good time while they're inside. All right, we're almost there, guys, and there's just one more important thing to add to this coop, and that's its name. Now, I don't know much about chickens, but I know that this coop is like the Cadillac of coops, and it's only fitting to give it an appropriate name. So after cutting out some cedar letters on the laser, I can finally christen this coop with its official name. All right guys, so that is it. This coop is done and I'm still living indoors, which means that this coop was an entire success. Absolutely love how it turned out. Honey Bunny is happy with the chickens. They're the bestest of friends. And shortly we're gonna be able to move them in. They're still a little bit too young for the coop, but that gives me time to work on some other things like building in a chicken run and a water solution for them. So if you guys enjoyed this build, let me know in the comments section below. Hit that thumbs up. Thank you so much to PowerSmart for supporting what I do. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.